The InGen list is one of the parts of the Jurassic franchise that could create an entire season of Jurassic myths all on its own. However, let's just start with a lesser known entry onto the list. What species was Roland Tembo referring to when he called the Parasaurolophus Elvis? Say that again, say that again, Wallen. A what? The one, one with the big red horn, the pompadour, Elvis! If you look at the Parasaurolophus, you won't exactly see a pompadour, as he had said. Also, wait, what is that sheet in Dr. Burke's hand? What species is that? Before we get too deep into answering that question, let's first give a little bit of background info. What was that packet Roland had during that scene? That was what the Dinosaur Protection Group told us was the infamous engine list that was referenced in Jurassic Park 3 in the conversation between Dr. Alan Grant and Billy Brennan. How would you classify it, Billy? Well, it's a super predator. Suchomimus. Snow. Oh, think bigger. Baryonyx. Not with that sail. Spinosaurus aegypticus. I don't remember that on InGen's list. Because it wasn't on their list, and that makes you wonder what else they were up to. So now that we have that info, Let's establish what species were included in the engine list that Roland, Ludlow, and Burke had on that infamous trip out to Isla Sorna way back in 1997. At least, what was in that specific list that was used on screen? Tyrannosaurus rex. Pachycephalosaurus wyomingensis. Brachiosaurus bronchi. Stegosaurus thanops, Comsignathus longipes, Velociraptor anterhopus, Gallimimus bellatus, Tyrannodon sternbergi, Mementisaurus cynocanadorum, Myosaura peeblesaurum. Hadrosaurus fulci, Dilophosaurus weatherilli, Triceratops horridus, Parasaurolophus walkeri, Carithosaurus casuarius. That last one is the one that was on Dr. Burke's sheet, the Carithosaurus casuarius. Interestingly enough, most of the species, with the exception of the Carithosaurus, Myasaura, and Hadrosaurus, are actually seen in the movie. So what happened? Short answer. Spielberg decided to change it to Parasaurolophus walkeri, and Myasaura and Hadrosaurus were likely replaced with the Edmontosaurus skull seen in the Rex nest, just like all of the other changes that happened to this movie. Hey, Ember no, no, where'd the amber mine? So there's definitely a more in-depth reason as to why they wouldn't have been seen in this movie. So before getting too deep into that question, let's lay some more information out on the table. The Carithosaurus has precedence of being on Isla Sorna before 1999, as in an early version of the Lost World script, it was an active species. The Carithosaurus even had a featured dino sheet giving size measurements, color description, and a general look at its appearance. None of these would be detailed if it wasn't active at some point in time prior to 1995. As stated beforehand, all of the dino sheets are of active species. So what happened to the Carithosaurus? Why is this the only species that isn't seen in this movie? 
Well, if we go back to the dinosaur protection groups list, we come to page 2.1, the inactive dinosaurs slash DNA samples page. On this page, we see a list of species that are considered inactive, and these species are as followed. Suchomimus tenorensis, Allosaurus fragilis, Metriacanthosaurus parkeri, Herrerasaurus ischigualistensis, Segisaurus halli, Dimorphodon macronix, Apatosaurus excelsus, Corythosaurus casuarius, Pachyrhinosaurus sp, Ankylosaurus magnaventris, Euoplocephalus tutus. The page labels these species as yet to be cloned, implying InGen hadn't gotten around to actually cloning them, but this isn't true and really doesn't make any sense. Since InGen used DNA collected from Amber to revive their prehistoric species, they didn't know what dinosaurs they were cloning before they hatched, or used some other identifying method like ultrasound. So it doesn't make sense that they were yet to be cloned. And not only that, we know that many species on this list had to have been cloned at some point in time. As we can see from this list, some of these have precedence as to have actually been cloned already. We know that from page 5.2, third page under the Herrerasaurus listing, it says that previously active on Nublar, four individuals were alive prior to the sabotage of park systems. All were found dead during the 1994 cleanup. The Apatosaurus was also known to have been active at one point on Isla Sorna, as the skeletal remains surrounding the communication center have been shown to have been an Apatosaurus. If we take Jurassic Park the game into account, which yes, we know is debatably canon depending on who you ask, there are x-rays of the Apatosaurus and Metriacanthosaurus in Dr. Sorkin's lab, so we know that both of those two species had to have been active on at least Isla Sorna at one point. It's not too much of a stretch to assume that they could have also been active on Isla Nublar as well, however our second Jurassic Myths video was actually on that subject, so go check that one out. Lastly, before getting back to the subject of the video, Metriacanthosaurus, Herrerasaurus, and Segisaurus had to have been cloned and lived long enough to have been considered viable for the park in order to have been considered worthy species for the opening day of the park. So now that we have established sources, both in hard canon and soft canon, we can safely say that inactive doesn't mean the animal wasn't cloned, and instead means the animals re-entered extinction following the fall of Isla Sorna. It is safe to assume that the Carithosaurus would have been active on Isla Sorna at some point prior to 1994, which is when the InGen list was written, but would have been abandoned and allowed to die out at some point after Hurricane Clarissa hit the island in 1995. This would give a reason as to why it has a full dino sheet, and that it could have been something that InGen was looking for during the roundup scene. The fact that it was never officially mentioned is a mystery only deep levels of headcanon can answer, which may or may not be answered when we do our Jurassic Timeline videos that we have been wanting to do. If this is the case, then why does the animal suddenly show up on Isla Sorna during the 2001 incident that takes place in Jurassic Park 3? Well, dear viewers, that's a subject worthy enough for its own video, which would also help answer the most common question we had on our previous video. And that would be, all the dinosaurs of Project Regenesis, also known as the Amalgam Test. Amber Miners, thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to click the subscribe button on your way out and click the bell icon to be notified of our videos when we upload them.